Division of NTT. So welcome, Massimo. OK. So this is the log of LACNIC. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Massimo Candela. I work for uh, uh, the global IP network of NTT, which is uh, we are a tier one. We have a large network. And what I do there, I uh, collaborate with the automation and uh, monitoring. And uh, I was involved in the process of deploying RPKI, helping deploying RPKI. And I was uh, uh, leading the part related to the monitoring uh, uh, of it. And this is uh, the, the topic of today. Um, so um, let's start uh, from the beginning. Um, do you hear me good? Because I, I feel it's uh, OK. So uh, what is RPKI? Uh, RPKI stands for Resource Public Key Infrastructure. And it is essentially a way to provide some security uh, to BGP. Um, in briefly, it is a way to provide associations between uh, prefixes and autonomous systems um, and make this association public in a repository in a way that the internet service provider can download that uh, and can uh, validate it cryptographically and they can use that associations to, for example, influence their BGP routing, for example, to um, um, reject uh, uh, routes that they are not supposed to be announced by uh, an AS. Um, however, when you do, like, uh, you create a, uh, one of these associations, like between prefixes and NISs, they are recorded in route origin authorizations, objects, and you create this raw, and uh, you go on your uh, RIR portal, like Milaknik, and you create this raw, and at some point this raw gets signed and it's published in a publication point. Uh, this entire operation, uh, makes it public and at some point uh, the internet service providers around the world they can download it verify it and start using it to influence BGP routing however as you can imagine um, uh, all these operations uh, requires uh, um, time so there is a delay um, the first part where you create up to when it gets public, uh, it's what I call publication delay, and it depends on the RIR. It can be a few minutes up to uh, one day from the RIR, from uh, uh, the certification authority, whatever, and from bugs or other stuff. And the propagation delay instead is the part related to whenever the internet service provider are ready to fetch it, download it, uh, uh, validate it and start using it. Uh, so there is some time involved. But why do we care about this? It's because um, while uh, BGP is much faster, uh, uh, RPKI uh, is lower. And then uh, we have a, a moment where BGP and RPKI, they can be out of sync. And if they are, uh, traffic may be dropped and uh, services may be impacted. Um, identity, we experienced that uh, uh, since the early beginning of our deployment, and I start documenting this issue in past presentations that I did. In summary, if you have essentially a, you have to change one of these prefix to S association for operational reasons, or you made one of that association and you made it wrong, uh, then having a, a lot of time between uh, the moment that you correct it and the moment that uh, people are able, other internet service providers are able to use it, um, is going to impact your services. And uh, so a shorter time helps you to mitigate this type of things. Also, uh, a good thing to do is to use monitoring to uh, guide your operation, uh, BGP and RPKI monitoring. But also the monitoring itself is affected by uh, uh, RPKI uh, delays. Um, so. I did various uh, uh, presentations in the past, uh, one at LACNIC 35, and there is one uh, really more deep uh, uh, research done by Randy Bush, and it will be presented on Thursday, 11.30, at the Internet BOF, Internet Measurement BOF. And uh, I think it's, uh, uh, it's important to, to uh, uh, dig on this topic, and it's a clear example of how 
uh, research can help to guide the internet. However, related to this presentation um, that I'm doing now at the moment, um, the question that we have is, uh, because for now this was not studied yet, so how uh, can we characterize uh, the propagation delay, so the part below, in particular the, uh, uh, the validation time to provide some guidance for ISPs and RIR. This is a research that we did in collaboration, well, in collaboration, was a, a research supported by Manners and uh, a special thanks to the uh, uh, other uh, team uh, member. And uh, I'm going to show you just quickly some, some numbers that we discovered and some takeaways. The first thing is that you can see here a plot of, a, it's a bit more than one year of validation times, and uh, the green are the ROAS and the blue are, is the time needed to validate. Uh, there are various oscillations that they are related to uh, various uh, things that they were impacting the RPI infrastructure, the software used and the version and stuff like this. But however, the main key factor is that the average, uh, the while the ROAS in increased by 25% in number, uh, the delays on average, they increase uh, uh, by 50%. And uh, so it, it, it requires some, some attention. Of course, it's normal that they will increase, but um, when it's going to be uh, uh, let's say too much. Here you can see a RPKI ecosystem in numbers. This is uh, just a, a nice image that you, it's a, um, describes basically all the components of the uh, five uh, trust anchors and you can see uh, basically each color is one of those and you have for example how many IPv4 and how many IPv6 of prefixes uh, uh, are available in the RPKI dataset, uh, how many CRLs, how many manifests, how many failed manifests and, and stuff like this. So this uh, I, I included because it's nice to give a, gives a quick uh, overall image. But let's start with this uh, uh, takeaway. So one raw, one VRP. So what that means is that we analyze the amount of, a, uh, uh, essentially the amount of uh, prefixes in association with that autonomous system inside a single raw and there are uh, some, auto, uh, some uh, uh, trust anchor that they allow uh, or they facilitate multiple uh, of these associations inside a single row. And we discovered that indeed, uh, uh, for example, APNIC RIPE, um, the speed uh, on, on which we are able to validate this row is almost the double when this is allowed. So uh, you can see bottom left, uh, you see the amount of uh, associations uh, per milliseconds that we are able to validate. Uh, while on the right, um, it, it's the same thing, but the left is offline, so we use the cache, and the right we use the online. The takeaway from here is that they indeed uh, wrapping multiple VRPs inside the same row is speeding up uh, uh, almost double the procedure, so this is something that could be used uh, uh, more. And uh, at the same time, we see also that the network has a factor of five as an impact on the entire uh, uh, timing. Uh, still, however, consistent between, uh, it, it's not really related to uh, uh, the amount of VRPs per uh, uh, row. The next takeaway, and this uh, we have to confirm it better because if confirmed, uh, it can be a, a warning label for uh, delegated RPKI. Delegated RPKI is essentially a way how you, instead of uh, uh, delegating completely to the uh, RIR to sign and publish the raw, you, you can essentially get your own CA, sign and publish wherever you want. However, it increases the depth of the certificate and the depth of the validation. And in Arin we discover, and I repeat, we have to validate this further. We discover that less than 3% are delegated RPKI, but they can impact up to 50% of the total validation time. So this could be something to take uh, uh, in consideration for the future. Um, so we analyze also the uh, timing related to uh, uh, the network because we said the network is impacting. Uh, so we analyze the, the time to reach uh, uh, the current infrastructure, in particular RRDP uh, um, instances. And uh, of course, uh, obvious takeaways, not all the region of the world are able to access with the same speed. Most of the infrastructure is anyway in the US and Europe. Uh, we have, however, that IPv6 is slightly slower for some reason and that uh, we have that uh, uh, there are at least four 
of these uh, uh, repositories that they are only IPv4, so not even available for IPv6. So we computed some of these numbers, and um, uh, the, in the end, uh, the, one of the lessons, I would say, so tools, uh, uh, the, the, the RPKI delays are a part of the system. I think in the future there will be more uh, uh, discussion about what parameters we should set for uh, have improved performance and, and while we do the validation. Uh, however, at the moment, the best, thing, uh, uh, the best thing in general is to use monitoring to guide your, uh, your operation tools that they can inform you when your RPKI changes are public and visible, and also tools that they can inform you when uh, uh, you are announcing invalids or uh, uh, your uh, uh, ROAS are expiring. I have uh, two tools that I can suggest here is BGP Alerter is the first. Uh, uh, that I developed identity, and the other one is uh, PacketVis, which is uh, a BGP alerter as a service. And in particular, I would like to mention about the second one that uh, uh, there was a specific focus on uh, reducing drastically uh, the RPKI delays in monitoring. As I said before, it's an important factor. Uh, basically, a network of uh, validators distributed in the world with a gap, and when they start doing the validation, they assure the system uh, uh, fresh RPKI data in essentially less than one minute, in addition to, of course, the usual BGP monitoring like hijack detection, visibility, and RPKI invalid. So you can connect to this website, packages.com, and, and start using it, or use the BGP alert uh, uh, open source. Um, so, my presentation is over, and uh, I, I think uh, we definitely will uh, expand more on this uh, research with the Manners uh, uh, colleagues, and uh, if you have questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you very much. Thank you, Massimo. Alguna pregunta, Guillermo, en forma remota? No? Bueno, entonces, thank you, Massimo. Uh, any remote questions? No, thank you for your participation. And we are completing the first lot of the LACNIC Technical Forum. We invite you for lunch in rooms five and six here by the plenary. And uh, we 